Off the southeastern coast of China lies an island of extraordinary significance to human migration history. Taiwan, known to its indigenous inhabitants by various names including Pakan, is not merely a geopolitical entity of modern importance, but the ancestral homeland of one of humanity's most remarkable dispersals. The indigenous peoples of Taiwan represent the genetic and cultural wellspring of the vast Austronesian expansion that eventually populated islands across Southeast Asia, Oceania, and reached as far as distant Madagascar off the African coast. This expansive journey, beginning approximately 5,000 years ago, represents one of the most extensive prehistoric human migrations ever documented. The Aboriginal populations of Taiwan, officially recognised as 16 distinct peoples, constitute about 2.4% of Taiwan's total population. Far from being a homogeneous group, these communities exhibit remarkable diversity in languages, cultural practices, and genetic signatures. Their story is not merely of local significance, but holds profound implications for understanding human adaptation, migration, and resilience across vast oceanic spaces. For decades, linguists had proposed that Taiwan represented the origin point of Austronesian languages, the out of Taiwan hypothesis. More recently, genetic studies have provided compelling evidence supporting this linguistic model, revealing that the indigenous Taiwanese truly represent the ancestral population from which the Austronesian expansion began. Their genetic signatures contain the keys to understanding how this remarkable diaspora unfolded, carrying their genes and cultural practices across thousands of miles of open ocean. These communities have faced centuries of colonization, marginalization, and cultural erasure, first under Japanese rule and later under Chinese governance. To understand the genetic story of indigenous Taiwanese, we must first appreciate the geological context that shaped their isolation and development. Taiwan emerged as an island through complex tectonic processes approximately six million years ago. During the Pleistocene ice ages, sea levels were significantly lower, creating land bridges that connected Taiwan to the Asian mainland, particularly during the last glacial maximum around 20,000 years ago. These connections allowed early human populations to reach the island, potentially as early as 30,000 years ago, though archaeological evidence becomes more substantial from about 6,000 years ago. The earliest archaeological evidence of human habitation comes from sites like Baxiandong, Eight Immortals Cave, in eastern Taiwan, dating to approximately 30,000 to 15,000 years ago. These Paleolithic hunter-gatherers represent an earlier stratum of settlement predating the Austronesian expansion. The Changbin culture of eastern Taiwan, 5,000 to 3,500 years ago, provides evidence of more sophisticated stone tool technologies and fishing practices, laying the groundwork for what would become the launching point of the Austronesian expansion. The emergence of Neolithic farming cultures around 6,000 to 5,000 years ago marks a pivotal moment in Taiwan's prehistory. These agriculturalists bringing rice cultivation and sophisticated pottery traditions established the foundations for what would become the Proto-Austronesian cultural complex. Archaeological sites like Dabin King in northern Taiwan showcase distinctive red pottery that would later influence ceramic traditions throughout the Austronesian world. This agricultural revolution provided the technological and social foundations necessary for population growth and eventual expansion beyond Taiwan's shores. It's important to note that Taiwan's indigenous peoples have experienced waves of outside contact and colonial pressure. The Dutch arrived in the early 17th century, followed by increasing Chinese settlement. The Japanese colonial period, 1895 to 1945, saw deliberate policies aimed at assimilating indigenous communities, while the subsequent Kuomintang government continued practices that marginalized indigenous languages and traditions. These historical pressures have influenced not only cultural practices, but potentially gene flow as well, though many communities maintained significant genetic isolation well into the modern era. Among indigenous Taiwanese populations, several mtDNA haplogroups predominate, telling a fascinating story of ancient origins and more recent diversification. Haplogroup B4, particularly subclades. B4, A1A and its derivatives represents one of the most significant maternal lineages. The Polynesian motif characterized by specific mutations, appears to have originated in Taiwan before spreading throughout remote Oceania. This genetic signature becomes increasingly prevalent as one moves eastward across the Pacific, ultimately reaching very high frequencies in Polynesian populations, sometimes exceeding 90% in some island groups like Samoa and Tonga. Haplogroup E, particularly subclades E1 and E2, 
represents another critical maternal lineage among indigenous Taiwanese. This haplogroup is virtually absent in mainland Asian populations, but reaches significant frequencies in Taiwan and throughout island Southeast Asia. Detailed analysis of haplogroup E diversity reveals the highest variation in Taiwan, consistent with it being the point of origin approximately 8,000 to 11,000 years ago. The distribution pattern of haplogroup E's subclades across Austronesian-speaking populations closely mirrors the proposed paths of the Austronesian expansion, providing genetic confirmation of linguistic models. Haplogroup F, particularly F1A, shows an interesting distribution pattern that suggests it may represent one of the earliest maternal lineages to arrive in Taiwan, possibly predating the Austronesian expansion. Its presence at low frequencies throughout Austronesia suggests it was part of the founding population that later expanded from Taiwan. Similarly, haplogroups M7 and M10 appear to represent early maternal lineages in Taiwan with deep connections to mainland East Asian populations, potentially reflecting the initial peopling of the island. Regional variations in mtDNA distributions among different indigenous Taiwanese groups reveal fascinating patterns of internal diversity. The Amis people show particularly high frequencies of haplogroup D4, while the Puyuma and Paiwan exhibit higher proportions of haplogroup B4. The Atayal and Saisiat show distinctive patterns dominated by haplogroups F and M7. These differences likely reflect the effects of genetic drift in relatively isolated populations, founder effects during the initial settlement of different regions of Taiwan, and potentially different waves of migration into Taiwan itself. The predominant Y-chromosome haplogroup among indigenous Taiwanese is OM122, also known as O2. Within this broad haplogroup, several subclades show particularly informative distributions. Haplogroup OP201 reaches high frequencies in many indigenous Taiwanese groups, especially the Amis and Paiwan, and subsequently appears throughout Austronesian-speaking populations in the Philippines, Indonesia, and beyond. The distribution pattern of this haplogroup with highest diversity in Taiwan and decreasing diversity with distance from Taiwan, provides strong support for the out-of-Taiwan model from a paternal genetic perspective. Another significant Y-chromosome lineage is OM95, which shows an interesting distribution pattern suggesting it may represent one of the earlier paternal lineages to reach Taiwan from the Asian mainland. This haplogroup is found at moderate frequencies in several indigenous Taiwanese groups, and also appears in Austronesian populations throughout island Southeast Asia, though at lower frequencies. The presence of this haplogroup in both Austroasiatic-speaking populations on the mainland and Austronesian speakers suggests complex interactions between these language families during prehistory. Interestingly, Y-chromosome studies have revealed some distinctive patterns among different indigenous Taiwanese groups. The Atayal and Saisiat in northern Taiwan show particularly high frequencies of haplogroup, OM119, while the Amis, Puyuma, and Paiwan in the east and south show higher frequencies of OP201. These differences likely reflect the effects of genetic drift in relatively isolated populations and potentially different waves of settlement within Taiwan itself. Such internal diversity reminds us that indigenous Taiwanese are not a homogeneous group, but represent multiple distinct communities with complex interrelationships. The Philippines represents the first major stepping stone in the Austronesian expansion beyond Taiwan, and genetic studies confirm this close relationship. Filipino populations, particularly indigenous groups less affected by recent admixture, show strong genetic affinities with indigenous Taiwanese across all genetic marker systems. The Cordilleran peoples of northern Luzon, like the Igorot, exhibit especially close connections to indigenous Taiwanese suggesting they may represent some of the earliest Austronesian settlers in the Philippines. As mentioned earlier, Y-chromosome haplogroup OP201 reaches high frequencies in both Taiwan and the Philippines, while mtDNA haplogroups B4A1A and E show similar distribution patterns, supporting a direct Taiwan to Philippines migration route. Perhaps most remarkably, the genetic connections to Taiwan remain visible even in the most remote oceanic populations. Polynesians, despite being separated from Taiwan by thousands of miles and millennia of time, retain clear genetic signatures of their Taiwanese origins. As mentioned before, the Polynesian mtDNA motif, B4A1A1A, represents a direct descendant of lineages found in indigenous Taiwanese, while Y-chromosome haplogroup, OP201, persists throughout Polynesia. 
Genome-wide studies consistently identify an Austronesian component in Polynesian autosomal DNA that connects directly back to Taiwan, even though this signal is somewhat diluted by subsequent Melanesian admixture during the Lapita cultural expansion through the Bismarck Archipelago and Solomon Islands. The Austronesian expansion reached its greatest geographical extent in Madagascar, where Austronesian settlers from Borneo arrived approximately 1,200 to 1,500 years ago. Even at this extreme western edge of the Austronesian world, genetic connections to Taiwan remain visible. Malagasy populations carry both Southeast Asian mitochondrial lineages and Y-chromosome haplogroups that ultimately trace back to Taiwan. Autosomal studies confirm that Malagasy are approximately 40% Southeast Asian in ancestry, with this component showing clear Austronesian genetic signatures linking back to indigenous Taiwanese origins. Micronesian populations present an interesting case, as they appear to represent a more complex mixture of influences from different phases of the Austronesian expansion. Western Micronesian islands like Palau and the Marianas show evidence of direct settlement from the Philippines, while Eastern Micronesian populations like the Marshallese and Kiribati show stronger connections to Polynesia. Despite this complexity, the ultimate Taiwanese genetic origins remain visible throughout Micronesia particularly in mitochondrial DNA and Y-chromosome distributions. The genetic consistency across this vast geographical expanse, from Taiwan through the Philippines, Indonesia, Melanesia, Polynesia, and even to Madagascar, represents one of the most remarkable examples of human migration and adaptation in our species' history. That these connections remain genetically visible despite the passage of thousands of years and countless generations testifies to the significance of the original Austronesian expansion from Taiwan and the resilience of these genetic signatures across time and space. The timing of this migration from the mainland to Taiwan remains a subject of ongoing research, but genetic evidence suggests several possible waves. The oldest lineages in indigenous Taiwanese may date back to the late Pleistocene, perhaps 15,000 to 20,000 years ago, when lower sea levels created land bridges connecting Taiwan to the mainland. However, the main ancestral population that would later give rise to the Austronesian expansion likely arrived during the early to mid-Holocene, approximately 6,000 to 8,000 years ago, corresponding with the introduction of Neolithic technologies to the island. Interestingly, genetic studies have identified connections between indigenous Taiwanese and some modern northern Han Chinese populations, particularly those from Fujian province directly across the Taiwan Strait. These connections likely reflect both ancient shared ancestry and potentially more recent gene flow since the initial Chinese settlement of Taiwan in the 17th century. However, indigenous Taiwanese remain genetically distinct from Han Chinese populations, confirming their separate identity and deep roots on the island predating Chinese settlement. The remarkable correspondence between linguistic and genetic evidence regarding indigenous Taiwanese origins provides one of the most compelling examples of how these different approaches to human prehistory can reinforce each other. Linguistic research had proposed Taiwan as the homeland of Austronesian languages decades before genetic evidence could test this hypothesis, and the subsequent genetic confirmation represents a powerful validation of this interdisciplinary approach to human migration history. The linguistic evidence for Taiwan as the Austronesian homeland rests primarily on the observation that Taiwan contains nine of the ten first-order branches of the Austronesian language family, with all Austronesian languages spoken outside Taiwan belonging to just one branch, Malayo-Polynesian. This pattern of maximal diversity at the point of origin represents a classic linguistic signature of a homeland region, paralleling the genetic pattern of highest diversity in source populations. The Proto-Austronesian language reconstructed through comparative linguistics, appears to have emerged in Taiwan approximately 5,000 to 6,000 years ago, aligning well with archaeological evidence for the development of Neolithic cultures on the island. Genetic studies have provided remarkable confirmation of this linguistic model. This parallel between genetic and linguistic patterns suggests that the spread of Austronesian languages occurred primarily through population movement rather than cultural diffusion with the genetic and linguistic heritage of Proto-Austronesians expanding together. However, there are also fascinating cases where genetic and linguistic patterns diverge, revealing more complex histories. The Yami Tao. People of Orchid Island speak a language classified within the Botanic subgroup of Philippine languages, and their genetic profiles show stronger affinities with northern Philippine populations than with other indigenous Taiwanese groups. This case likely represents a 
back migration from the Philippines after the initial Austronesian expansion, demonstrating the complex multi-directional nature of human migrations. The Rukai and Paiwan provide another interesting case. Despite speaking quite different languages, these groups show remarkable genetic similarities, suggesting gene flow across linguistic boundaries. Such examples remind us that while linguistic and genetic histories often align, they can also follow separate trajectories influenced by different social and cultural factors. Archaeological evidence suggests that the ancient seafaring peoples of Taiwan possessed remarkable maritime technology that enabled their expansion across the seas to the Philippines and beyond. Based on what we know from archaeological findings, ethnographic studies of traditional boat building and linguistic reconstructions, we can imagine the kinds of vessels these ancient voyagers might have used for their journeys. The ancient Taiwanese likely constructed sophisticated outrigger canoes, combining stability with maneuverability for open sea voyaging. Archaeological evidence, though limited by the perishable nature of wooden vessels, includes stone tools specialized for woodworking found at coastal sites throughout Taiwan, dating to the period of initial Austronesian expansion, around 4,000 to 4,500 years ago. These specialized adzes, chisels, and gouges would have been essential for hollowing out the substantial hardwood logs that formed the primary hull of these vessels. Linguistic evidence strengthens this picture, as reconstructed Proto-Austronesian includes specific vocabulary for boat parts including outriggers, sails, and paddles, indicating sophisticated maritime technology existed before the expansion began. These vessels were likely single-hulled canoes, with lateral outriggers for stability, measuring perhaps 15 to 20 metres in length for the largest ocean-going versions. The main hull would have been crafted from a single massive log, hollowed out and shaped using controlled burning and specialised adzes, with raised gunnels created by attaching additional planking. Outriggers, crucial for stability in open water, would have been attached using complex lashing systems utilising strong plant fibres, likely similar to the coconut choir used in later Austronesian vessels. Archaeological findings of stone anchors and fishing gear from coastal sites in eastern Taiwan suggest vessels capable of both near-shore and deeper water activities. Evidence indicates these boats utilised woven pandanus or plant fibre sails, probably in a triangular or crab claw configuration similar to those documented in later Austronesian sailing traditions. This sail design, allowing vessels to sail relatively close to the wind, represented a significant technological achievement that facilitated intentional two-way voyaging, rather than mere drift voyages. Discoveries of stone sailing weights and possible rigging components at archaeological sites in eastern Taiwan support the existence of sail technology during the period of initial expansion. The journey from Taiwan to the northern Philippines would have required crossing approximately 150 to 200 kilometers of open ocean through the Luzon Strait, a significant but manageable voyage for vessels of this design. Ocean current patterns in this region would have facilitated southward travel during winter months when the prevailing currents flow from Taiwan toward Luzon. Archaeological evidence confirms this connection with Taiwan-derived red-slipped pottery, stone tool technologies, and domesticated plant remains appearing in northern Luzon sites around 4,000 years ago, marking the arrival of these maritime pioneers. These vessels represent not merely functional transportation, but sophisticated technological systems reflecting generations of accumulated maritime knowledge. Their creation would have required specialised expertise in selecting appropriate trees, complex woodworking techniques, understanding of hydrodynamics, and intricate knowledge of rigging systems and sail management. This maritime technology, developed and refined on Taiwan, became the enabling vehicle for one of humanity's most remarkable migrations, carrying Austronesian genes, languages and cultures across a vast oceanic realm. Ultimately, the genetic origins of indigenous Taiwanese remind us of the extraordinary diversity and resilience of human populations.